Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about JavaScript objects and JSON and how to work with JSON in JavaScript. So before even we talk about uh, JSON, let's first talk about JavaScript objects. So here I have created one file in index.html which have JavaScript in it. Uh, we have just one JavaScript object here which is referenced by a variable called place. Now a JavaScript object is a collection of properties where each property have some value. It can have a string as a value or an array like top four property or a boolean or null or a number. So in this case, we have four properties, country, currency, top four, and democratic. Now country is having value Morocco, currency have a value of Moroccan dinham, and top four is actually an array which uh, have four objects in it now each object uh, having two properties city and population uh, then we have the last properties as democratic so if I load this page into a browser then we can start playing around the JavaScript so I will load it into Chrome and now let's access the developer console so now if I access the place object, uh, we will get that object in the console and we can see what properties are there. So we have country, we have currency, democratic and topper. Not that order is different in the order in which we inserted the properties into that object. So order is not guaranteed. So if we want to access some of the properties of that object we can use it uh, you can access it with dark notation so we can say uh, place dot country to access the country property similarly we can say uh, place dot suppose we want to access the first element in top four array which is an object so we can say place dot top four and then zero which stands for first uh, document first object we got it here Casablanca and population here uh, one important thing to remember here is we are not putting quotes around this property names but we can do that so it's not mandatory to put quotes around the property name but you can do that uh, and one uh, case where you should put it uh, is Suppose your name of the property uh, is having two words. So if country having mm, property name as country name, you have to put quotes around this. So in this case, you have to put quotes around this. So now if you refresh the browser and access place, it have the property country name. And now you cannot simply say place dot country name to access the uh, country name property it won't work you have to use the bracket notation for in this case so place dot not dot bracket notation and country name so remember uh, we have here uh, auto completion so it's not mandatory to put quotes around properties but you can put it and even when your words uh, when your property name constitute of two words you should not name your property names with two words you, either you should use camel case or you can use underscore to do that so to name country name property you can name it like country name camel case or with underscore like that and you can remove the quotes in that case like that So now I can say place and place dot country. Oh, sorry, place dot country name like that. I don't have to use that bracket notation. So very important thing you uh, must. It's not must to provide quotes around properties, but if it constitutes uh, with two names or anything that does not. Mm, follow the JavaScript naming rules for variables then you should put quotes around your properties 
So this is what we talked about JavaScript objects. So now let's talk about uh, JSON and how it's different from JavaScript. So if you go to JSON, json.org, it says uh, JSON is built on two structures and uh, a collection of name value pairs, which is called object. Remember that we are not talking about JavaScript objects here and an ordered list of values which is called an array. So a JSON uh, is just a collection of two things. It's an object or it's uh, an array, which can be an array of number, it can be an array of string, it can be an array of object or boolean, like that. So rather than talking, let's create some JSON. So I'm gonna use JSON lint to write JSON. So remember we type our JavaScript objects without quotes around property names. So we type like this in the previous case. It is valid uh, JavaScript object, but this is not a valid JSON. So if you validate this JSON, it's gonna fail. It's gonna say there are no fields around the key value pair. So it's mandatory to put quotes around the key value pairs. Key actually means your property name. And not single field, you have to put double field. Now if you validate it, it it's going to work. And this is valid JSON. So as we said here, a JSON is a collection of name value pairs. So in this case, it's a name, it's country, and value is Morocco. And you can also put uh, array, as we talked uh, here in JSON org. It's an order list of values, which is called an array. So I can put here like cities. Remember, we have to put the quotes around key names. So cities can be an array of strings. It can have this uh, Casablanca. It can have Faz. And you can have Tanzir. So this is valid JSON. So if you validate it, it will be a valid JSON, still valid JSON. But if you forget to put quotes around your key, now it's not a valid JSON. But it's a valid uh, JavaScript object. So that's the difference, that's the main difference between JavaScript objects and JSON. You have to put quotes around your key. While in JavaScript, it's okay if you don't provide the uh, quotes around your property names. It's not mandatory in JavaScript objects. Uh, another good thing about JSON lint is uh, you can put uh, the URL which generate JSON. Now, now in this time, most of the APIs generate JSON format data. So, actually, I created one application uh, which uses JSON data. So, we're gonna validate that JSON using JSON lint. So this is the application. Uh, it's called 10 things you should keep doing in life. Uh, it's a collection of 10 things and all this data is coming from a JSON array. So the data uh, is coming from this file. So let's validate this in JSON lint. So I'm gonna put it here, just that URL. It's automatically gonna fetch the data by making a get request validate JSON and this is the data so it's an array of JavaScript objects so we have 10 objects here in that uh, array each having a name image name summary and description note that there are quotes around the key it's very important to remember that so you can use JSON link to create your JSON or to check uh, whether it's a valid JSON or not so if I Click validate JSON, it's a valid JSON. So we talked about JavaScript objects and JSON. Now there are two very important functions if you are working with JSON in JavaScript. One is called json.parse and another one is json.stringify. So what uh, json.parse does is if you have JSON uh, data, you can parse it into a JavaScript object. So I wrote some lines of code here. So I'm gonna just grab that code. 
and put it here. So this is a JSON um, document where he having double quotes and some values. Now this is a JSON. It's a valid JSON text string. Now what we are doing here with JSON.parse is we are converting that uh, JSON into a JavaScript object so we can use that data and manipulate that data uh, with object, JavaScript object. So now if I refresh the index.html file, it says response is this and JavaScript object is this. So response is the plain uh, JSON data and when we parse it, we and get that data into J, uh, JavaScript object, into a JavaScript object here, OBJ. So this is actually an object. So if you type OBJ here, it will return as a JavaScript object while our data was uh, in JSON format. And remember that if you are parsing uh, the JSON, which is not a correct and correct JSON format, you're gonna get error for that. So if I remove the quotes around the price key and try to refresh it and you will get unexpected token. So while you are parsing, it's very important that the data is in the right JSON format. So JSON.parse is used to parse uh, JSON data into JavaScript objects. And there is another function that is json.stringify which uh, is just opposite to json.parse. So json.stringify is used when you have to convert a JavaScript object into JSON. So I locked some piece of code here. I'm gonna grab this piece of code and I put it here. Now here we have a variable data which reference to this JavaScript object which have two properties, version and stage. Now this is a JavaScript object. We want to convert this into a JSON. And why we want to convert this into JSON is, uh, suppose uh, you have your API uh, and you have to update or insert the data so it ex and it expects the uh, incoming data into JSON format. Now, if you want to send data, you have to convert that data into JSON first. So now here we have a JavaScript object we want to convert that object and then make a post request to the API so that we can insert or update, update the document. So to do that, we first have to convert that JavaScript object into a valid JSON. And for that, we use json.stringify. So now if I refresh the browser, so if you see here, it's a JavaScript object. It does not have quotes around these properties but when we convert it into stringify and you see in the console we are logging it so if you see in the console uh, you can see the quotes around this so it's a valid json document and for making a post request to your endpoint to, for insert or update or any kind of operation if you require a valid json so you should use uh, json.stringify for it to convert that data into a json document before making the post request so this is uh, the difference between JavaScript objects and JSON and how to work with JSON in JavaScript. I hope you find it beneficial.